Today on Dive Vibe, we are going to save Christmas. So don't go anywhere. For eons, holiday gift giving has plagued play, play mankind. The great split fin crisis of the early 2000s chilled at the dive industry like a sickness. The sport of diving itself teetered on the edge of oblivion as more and more gear was released in colors other than black. This doesn't feel right at all. This is this channel's called Dive Vibe, and the vibe is off. Guys, can we get some different music going? Come on. That works. Okay. It's, I don't know. I just feel like maybe we should have decorated. It's not really a holiday video if they You gotta decorate. I feel like you gotta decorate. <laughs> I don't decorate. Oh. Mm. That's better. What? You didn't think I was actually going to decorate? All right, welcome back to Dive Five. It's the holidays. I get it. You're busy. Everybody's busy. It's the holidays. So I'll cut to the chase. The way I see it, gifts for divers boil down into two categories. Cheap stuff and expensive stuff. Maybe more like expensive stuff and less expensive stuff because you know it's dive gear and there's no cheap dive gear but before we start talking about that we need to know what type of diver we're shopping for so a recreational diver a technical diver a professional a technical professional the possibilities are endless i mean if they're a dive professional that's that's pretty easy they probably just want camera stuff and dive trips or beer here's always good problem solved DSMB, or Delayed Surface Marker Buoy. If you value the person you're shopping for, which is probably likely, then a DSMB can be a great way to protect them when they're out in the ocean. They cost anywhere between $30 and $100, and maybe more, depending on what kind of crazy stuff they're made out of. And they're used on the surface so that divers can indicate their position to boats around them. They can also aid in getting picked up at the end of the drift dive by the boat. The boats will look for the big orange tube that the diver inflates on the surface. So they can carry this thing around all rolled up nice and tight. And then you can blow it up and it's four feet tall, six feet tall, eight feet tall, however big. There's one crazy one out there. I'll see if I can find a picture of it that's like 30 feet tall or some craziness. Uh, but anyway, it really makes you a whole lot more visible. And they don't have to be deployed from the surface, which leads me into my next item. Spools. Spools have many uses. You can use one to deploy a DSMB. You just attach it to the spool, inflate the DSMB underwater, watch that thing ride to the surface, make sure you don't hit anybody on the way up there, and you're good to go. Now you're indicating your position to the boats that are passing by, and they know that someone's going to surface there soon once you finish your decompression or your safety stop, whatever you're doing. But their use doesn't stop there. Cave divers use these for jump spools and safety spools, spools that they rely on to get them out of tricky situations sometimes. So I would say that this is definitely a situation where uh, two is one and one is none. You can always use more spools, especially since, you know, sometimes you lose them and stuff like that. And nowadays they've got these cool aluminum ones, whether you buy the expensive ones, or you get the cheap one. Buying a spool for a diver is likely to be appreciated. Bolt snaps. Bolt snaps make the technical diving world go round. Uh, they are my favorite method of attachment, and many divers share that opinion with me, uh, mostly because they don't have a gate that hinges open, so they can't get caught on a line and potentially entangle the diver. You actually have to slide it open. That and once you learn how to use these properly in practice, they're like second nature. They're so easy to use. And I put them on just about everything that goes in the water with me. Um, and they tend to get lost sometimes, so I like to keep a bunch around. If I don't have at least like 10 of these hanging out on my workbench, I start to get nervous. So a big fat pile of bolt snaps is a great gift for the diver in your life. Weight plates. Originally manufactured by a company called Dripstone. Very cool, uh, small product, got bought by Excess Scuba. As far as I know, all that went well, so go buy them. Uh, but they're awesome. You can actually mount weights anywhere on your harness that you want to. And they're really helpful for me in classes because I can position weights all over the students so I can trim them out just right and we can know where their weights need to go on their BCD. Lower body sinking, ruining your trim, throw some of that weight on your shoulders and you'll trim yourself right back out. Perfect horizontal trim. Books. 
books. If the diver in your life isn't diving, chances are they're thinking about diving. So help them pass the time a little bit more quickly. Get them a book to read about diving. That's great. Shadow Divers, that's a great book. Um, if you if they've already read it, because it's really popular, uh, Last Dive is really awesome. Kind of sad, it's real sad, but it's a great read and you know, you learn a lot, it's thought provoking, it's awesome. If they're into the more textbooky type of thing, maybe they're getting into rebreathers, you could get them CCR Simplified by Mel Clark. That book is awesome. It's got a whole series of simplified books and they're, you know, they're a little bit dated because they don't include some of the newer rebreathers, but it doesn't really matter that much. Everything's still very relevant. Highly recommend that book. Plus Mel Clark is awesome. If you've ever met her in cave country, she is a force man. <laughs> now let's talk about the more expensive stuff. This is where it gets good. So you wouldn't be faulted for steering clear of this section of the list. We're talking about big money here. And if you're not quite sure if it's the perfect thing for the diver you're shopping for, it's kind of a, a high risk thing. I mean, especially if for some reason you can't take it back. But for those brave enough or with enough disposable income, uh, stick around and I'll do my best to help you out. Okay, so first, this was on my last list. It's, it's on this list. It's probably gonna be on the next list. Uh, GoPros, GoPro cameras are a great gift, especially if they don't have one or they have an older one. The Hero 11 is awesome. It does 5.3K at 60 frames per second. That is absolutely staggering considering the camera that I'm filming on right now that I think looks amazing shoots only at 4K 30 frames per second, which might be a little bit dated, but the fact that you're getting that in such a compact, tiny camera is amazing and it's already waterproof to 33 feet. Uh, they also have 10 bit color, which gives you more control after the dive when you're trying to grade your footage uh, because the footage from underwater things doesn't always play nicely when you're trying to grade it. Don't forget, they're also going to need the protective housing. Otherwise they won't be able to take it any deeper than 30 feet and they're going to want to take it deeper than 30 feet. I assure you. Regulators, all divers need regulators. Even rebreather divers need open circuit regulators to make the rebreather function and to go on their bailout tanks or what have you. Uh, technical divers need all kinds of regulators, probably two on their back or on their sides. And then every stage, deco tank, bailout tank, travel gas, all of those tanks need to have their own regulator. The deeper you want to go, the more tanks you need. And the more tanks you need, the more regs you need. If we're talking about a reg for a bailout tank or a stage tank or something like that, then you want to keep it pretty simple. Probably the most complicated feature you'd want on it is a swivel turret. Something simple from a reputable company like Apex or Scuba Pro should do the trick. And the regulator should be in DIN, unless you're dealing with some kind of weirdo, in which case I cannot help you. <laughs> I can only give you advice that makes sense, unfortunately. And if you're not sure what kind of reg to get them, then maybe go check out their dive bag or their dive locker and see what they've already got. And maybe get just the newest version of that. Or you could talk to their dive buddy, as long as they ain't no snitch. Actually, I can't overstate that. Talking to the dive buddy when shopping for the diver in your life is a great idea. Okay, so if you really like the person and you want to make that abundantly clear, you really can't go wrong with the Shearwater Perdix too. Uh, just came out, titanium bezel on that thing. It looks hot, really nice dive computer. Does just about everything anybody could want except for rebreather connectivity. Uh, but it's also a great backup computer for a rebreather diver. These days, just about every technical diver is using either a Perdix, a Petrol, or their slimmer, hotter cousin, the Taric. Uh, Shearwater computers have kind of become the gold standard, although there, you know, there are some use cases for dive soft and other stuff like that. But my personal preference is Shearwater. And plus, if you run out of wrist space for dive computers, just toss one on your ankle. Ankle Perdix. Hell yeah. That's, that's a joke. Don't don't put computers on your ankle. Okay, last but not least, the ultimate Christmas gift. A DPV, Diver Propulsion Vehicle, an underwater scooter. These things are awesome. They greatly enhance your dive experience. But with prices rivaling that of motorcycles, up until recently, they haven't been very appropriate for Christmas gifts. Now, with the release of the Divex Black Tip, they're down in the like 1750 range, a little bit more expensive than 
your average Christmas gift maybe, but it's, it's more achievable, right? And it is absolutely my favorite thing. I don't know, if I had to choose between my rebreather and my DPV, it would be a hard choice. The only time I'm not using my scooter these days is when I'm teaching. So that means that you basically have to pay me to not dive with my scooter. It's the only time I don't use it. The only problem is diving without one, once you have one, kind of sucks. Okay, now let's talk about ladies dive gear. Get them literally the same shit. The girls play just as hard as the guys and they need the exact same level of gear. I hope this video helped you out. If you're still confused and maybe you need some more specific ideas, you can check out my other video. It's it's a little bit more specific and kind of names specific items to buy. So if that sounds like what you need, check it out. Together, we can put an end to the tyranny of shitty scuba presents. I believe in us. So thanks for diving with me today, and I'll see you in the water. Hey.